Respected everyone, myself Dr. Priyanka Kanekar and my paper topic is study of efficacy of Revamipide 2% and carboxymethyl cellulose 0.5% eye drop in dry eye cases, co-authored by Dr. Rupa Naik and Dr. Siddharth Sane. Background and objectives. Dry eye disease is a tear film disorder which causes ocular symptoms like foreign body sensation, dryness, blurring of vision, photophobia and tear film dysfunction. The prevalence in India is 29.25%. The primary causative reasons of dry eye are lack of tear production or increased tear evaporation which causes deterioration of the ocular surface and is associated with symptoms of ocular discomfort. Ribamipide is a mucin stimulator drug. It helps in cytoprotection, healing of wound and has anti-inflammatory and free radical scavenger properties. Carboxymethyl cellulose is the most frequently used drug as the artificial drops in dry eyes. CMC prolongs the retention time, duration of activity, lubrication and hydration of ocular surface. The current study was conducted with an aim to assess the effectiveness of 2% revamipide and 0.5% CMC eye drops in the dry eye. Materials and Methods It was a randomized interventional prospective study done from January 2019 to December 2019. Sample size 40 in each group, that is, uh, total 80 patients were chosen from outpatient clinic of ophthalmology department of a tertiary care hospital. Data was analyzed using software EpiInfo version 7.2. All results are expressed as number, percentages and mean plus or minus standard deviation in the form of tables and graphs. Mean values of scores were compared using unpaired t-test. A value of P less than 0.05 is considered significant. Inclusion criteria, patients with score of more than 2 for one or more dry eye related ocular symptoms for more than or equal to 2 months, Schremer's 2 test value less than 5 mm at 5 minutes or tear film breakup time less than 5 seconds, patients willing to participate in the study and who are ready to give written informed consent. Exclusion criteria, patients with active eye infection, known allergies to ingredients of the two drugs, using contact lenses, blepharospasm, glaucoma, punctal plugs, vascular disease, history of ocular surgery within one year and history of any ocular medications which causes dry eye. Total 80 patients with dry eye disease fulfilling inclusion and exclusion criteria were selected and they were divided into two equal groups such as group A included 40 patients which received revamipide 2% and group B included 40 patients which received carboxymethyl cellulose 0.5% one drop in each eye four times a day for about three months. The following parameters were evaluated distant visual acuity, anterior segment slit lamp examination, tear film function by tear film breakup time, tear secretion, Schremer's 1 and Schremer's 2 test, slit lamp examination of tear meniscus height and IOP measurement by Goldman's applination tonometer. Follow up, patients were assessed at 4, 8 and 12 weeks. Results and observations. Table 1 shows demographic data. There was no significant difference between the two groups since the p-value is more than 0.05. Comparison of mean Schremer score. In the follow-up period after treatment with drugs at 4P, there was no significant difference in the mean Schremer's test score between Rebamipide and CMC groups. In both the groups, Schremer's test was found to increase gradually from 4 weeks to 12 weeks. At 8 weeks and 12 weeks, Schremer's score was significantly more in Rebamipide 2% group than CMC group, p-value less than 0.05. Comparison of mean tear film breakup time score. In the follow-up period after treatment with drugs at 4 weeks, there was no significant difference in mean tear film breakup time score between Nebamipide and CMC groups. In both the groups, tear film breakup time score was found to increase gradually from 4 to weeks to 12 weeks. At 8 weeks and 12 weeks, tear film breakup time score was significantly more in Nebamipide group than CMC group. p values less than 0.05. Comparison of mean ocular surface disease index score. In the follow up period after treatment with drugs at 4 weeks, there was no significant difference in mean OSD score between Rebamipide and CMC groups. In both the groups, the OSD score was found to decrease gradually from 4 weeks to 12 weeks. At 8 weeks and 12 weeks, OSD score was significantly less in Rebamipide group than CMC group, p value less than 0.05. Discussion and results. In 2007, the International Dry Eye Workshop updated the original definition and classified dry eye as a multifactorial disease of the tears and ocular surface that results in symptoms of discomfort, visual disturbance and tear film inability with potential damage of the ocular surface. Carboxymethyl cellulose has anionic characteristics which causes length and tear retention time that could influence the tear film stability leading to reduction of tear film hyperosmolarity and possible inflammation alleviation. Ability of ribamipide to increase gastric mucin led to investigations of its effects on ocular surface mucin and the subsequent development for use in dry eye patients. A latest study shows that ribamipide augment mucin like glycoprotein and MUC1 and MUC4 gene expression when human corneal epithelial cells were nurtured with ribamipide. In our study, the patients on ribamipide eye drop improved significantly in relation to the signs and symptoms of dry eye. 
Shizuka Ko in the study on treatment with ribamipid found significant increase in the TFM breakup time at 2 and 4 weeks after initiating the treatment compared with the baseline and significant changes were seen in Shrummer's test score 4 weeks after the treatment although there was no significant difference at 2 weeks. Similarly, Eskinoshita observed significant difference at 4 weeks between ribamipid 2% and placebo groups. In our study, a significant difference of mean tremors and TFM breakup time score between 2% rebamipide and 0.5% CMC groups was observed at 8 and 12 weeks. It suggests that rebamipide 2% diet drop improves the tear production and quality in dry patients by increasing the mucin production from droplet cells. The reported adverse effects were similar between the two groups. However, there are few constraints to, uh, to the current study because the sample size was small and follow-up was short. Conclusion, in the treatment of dry eye disease, the 2% remamipide was more effective and better tolerated. Response to remamipide was more as compared to carboxymethyl cellulose in treatment of dry eye disease. Thus, remamipide is superior to carboxymethyl cellulose in long-term treatment of dry eye disease and such improvements should contribute to improved quality of life in patients with dry eye. References are as follows. Thank you.